Hello everyone and welcome to BHD Studios. Today we will be doing an unboxing of the Leica Q3 which is just under here right now. But before we begin, just show you this beautiful Leica, this Barnack design Leica 3A with the Leica motor. And on here is a Wotencraft uh, leather strap, Italian leather strap. Beautiful combination here, and you're probably wondering what's with these sneakers. Well, in celebration of getting the Q3, I thought I would show off my Adidas Remoa collaboration NMD S1. I mean, look at the look at the outsole with the little trifold design, and so I really love these sneakers, and I thought I would whip them out just because I got the Q3 here. And so let's do an unboxing, and we'll talk about what I think about this camera. Right, so let's start now. All right, Leatherman. Free T4 to open this up. This is the outer box of uh, whenever you get a brand new Leica. This is how I usually get it, just because it comes directly from the local Leica app. Thank you so much, Eric, for letting me be the first to play with this. And so let's just take this out of the box here. And now this is this is probably what most people are used to seeing when they see a Leica unboxing here. And I don't think I'm gonna need my knife anymore. And it's been a while since I did a Leica unboxing of a brand new camera, so I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, the Q3 just came out last week, and oh, look at that. I mean, the Leica's packaging is, I mean, look at that. Everything just kind of folds down. And where's, where's the front here? Let me just figure this out. Maybe I opened it up backwards. Yes, I did. It's this way here. It's like origami here, isn't it? And look at that. This opens up like this little magnets on the top and the bottom, and we have multiple boxes here. Let's just move the outer box. All right, here's the outer box, and now this top here probably contains the camera, and then the bottom opens up here, and all these little drawers. So let's just see what's in these drawers here. Middle drawer is just, I think it's instructions here, and just sort of how to register the product in various languages, all right? And then here we have the actual instruction manual over here and we'll, we'll look at this later. We're just super excited to see the camera itself. But you know, when you buy a premium product like the Q3, you kind of expect these little extra accoutrements. And you know, Leica does put all the accessories in these little pouches. So we'll, we'll look through this. I, I'm too excited to actually take a look at the camera. So we'll look at this, put this off to the side. We'll put this nice box off to the side. And here we go, Q3. All right, excellent. Super excited. Here we go, and let's put it back in the box here. It just looks better without that wrap, there you go. So this is what it looks like in the box. Maybe this will be the thumbnail. Let me just move this like this. Screenshot, thumbnail, oh, but I kinda want my watches in here too. Look at that. Alrighty. Now, in terms of weight, I think it's pretty similar to the to the previous one. This might be a little bit heavier, but I mean, looking at it in terms of even the thickness here, I'll eventually get a Q2 or a Q1 so I can compare. And you know, the first thing you're gonna notice, obviously, and this is something that people have been asking for for a while, is the articulating screen. There's a little ridge along the bottom here. So as this is closed like this, you just grab this and open it up like that. And this is a, a 1.84 million dot LCD, and the Fujifilm X-T5 also has that, so it may even be the same LCD, and so I'll check to see if it's the exact size, so you can just use the same screen protectors from the X-T5. And let's look at the angles here. This is good enough to kind of shoot over your head, and this way here is almost flat, but you know, that angle is fine. Pretty much when you're shooting, that's kind of the angle that you want to be shooting down low. So this is a big deal for the Q3, but what was kind of a bigger deal for me is actually in the pictures, I noticed this little side door. I'm like, please say there's HDMI out. Please say there's HDMI out. And there you go. You have HDMI out and you have USB Type-C. I think it's 3.1, 3.2 Gen 2 on here. So it's not only for power, but also for data which is great, so like the, uh, like the M11. And the M11 had it down here. Uh, this is off the side, which makes sense on the Q. 
And this is kind of this rubber rubberized door, not like a metal hinge door, which is fine, I guess. Maybe that's part of the reason why it's a IP52 rating. I'll, I'll correct myself down below, but this is weather sealed, which is great. And then you do have these contacts, which I was wondering, what are those contacts for? It's for the hand grip, but also for wireless charging. Now, it's gonna be much slower than just plugging it in. And then as well, probably faster if you just, you know, pop this into a charger. And so let's go uh, dig for the battery charger here. Let's leave this off to the side and look at the main accessories. Now the first thing you get, and this is what you got with the M11 as well, is you do get a USB-C to Lightning. So clearly they know the demographics. They're gonna be Apple users, people that don't mind paying a premium for build quality and ease of use and things of that nature. And definitely the Q3 is kind of a league of its own. You can't really compare this to anything other than maybe the Sony RX1 Mark II or whatever. And that's, I don't know, when's the last time Sony updated that? I don't think it's selling very well because if it was selling well, that would be on like Mark VI by now. But no, it's a Mark II, tiny battery. It's, I think optically, it's a great lens, but the design and sort of people aren't willing to pay that price. This camera here, I just checked on b and it's like on their best seller list. So this is selling very well. So at just under $6,000, we'll talk about this as we're looking at all the features, but for $200 premium over the Q2, I mean, you know, updated battery, updated LCD screen, updated EVF, newest processor, newest sensor, you know, all the updates on here for only $200 more, I, I think that's a steal of a deal. And so anyway, so here you go, you have this, what else do we have here? Not easy to open. All right, got lazy, pulled everything out. And so you do get a external charger, which is awesome. And you get two different cables. I think it's better to just get the little stubbies. I would just buy those off of Amazon so you don't need to, although some people might like the length of these things, but because this has wireless charging, I think this would be for fast charging and then have the wireless charging when you go out and shoot, have it on your desk, drop it on and let it sort of trickle charge overnight or whatever you need. But I've always liked the Leica charge because they tell you when you are at 80% charge. So so most batteries can charge up to 80% pretty quickly and then the rest of the time it's, it charges much slower. So if it's charging and you want to know, hey, 80%, I want to get up and go, the Leica charger tells you that. So actually, I really like their external chargers and appreciate them including it. As well, you have this ring. So this is probably, put this on when you remove the lenses. So we'll play with that a little bit later. And here's this brand new battery. Now this is the same size as the previous battery and works exactly the same, but you have increase in power. I think it's 2200 milliamp hours over 1800, something like that from the previous one. But as well, this, this new Q3 is also more power hungry because the EVF is from five point, the previous was I think 3.69 and now it's 5.76, as well as the LCD from just over a million dots to 1.84 million dots. The new processor, 60 megapixel, three resolution sensor, as well as an improved autofocus system. So I think shot to shot, it's, this probably still gets a little bit less uh, according to the specs. And so sure, it's a more powerful battery, but this camera needs a more powerful battery. And so that still is, is great. And of course, the way the battery works, if you're unfamiliar, is it clicks in, doesn't come out. See that? It doesn't come out until you click it back up and over again. So let's just turn this on, because I always love no, the battery is not charged yet, so we're gonna to have to charge that up. Another thing you're gonna notice here is that threaded shutter release. So I'm gonna actually just put something on there right now. All right, sorry, X-Pro3, I'm gonna to have to take this off of you here. And this is also a another, look at that. I have the BHT here on this leather strap from Wotencraft, I'll put links down below. As well as this threaded shutter release from Retro Photo York, where that uh, Leica motor is from. Look at that. Look how cool that look with the brass shutter release. And of course, this isn't just cosmetic. You do get a little bit more torque, and this has a little bit of a curve here, a little bit of an, in, a little bit of an indent, so it just feels more comfortable, as well as you increase the torque, and it just looks awesome. And so that's a great accessory to have. Now let's just pull this lens cap off here. And optically, this is exactly the same as the other two versions, which is great. And this is a 28 millimeter Sumilux, which is 1.7. 
and also has a macro mode. So even without macro, you can get right down to 0.3, which on a regular Leica M mount lens, you get down to 0.7. And so even without macro mode, getting 0.3 is awesome. And then when you switch over the macro, bada bing, you get all the way down to 0.17. So 17 centimeters from the sensor plane, so right over here. So that's great. So having a lens like this, both the 28 Summa Lux, which on an M mount, is worth more than this camera by itself. So I think it's like $7,800 for the 28 Summa Lux, and this is just under $6,000. So within the Leica ecosystem, this is a deal. Even the 28 millimeter Summa Cron is like $5,000. So for like for another $1,000, you're getting an entire camera system, not just a lens. So that's why for Leica shooters, having something like this, having the EVF, having the LCD screen, and now having a articulating screen, as well as having autofocus, all for just under $6,000 is a deal. It's like buying a Porsche and you're trying to compare it to a Lexus. It's not the same thing. You can see right there, this is still made in Germany, so it costs more money to make things in Germany, as well as the design aesthetic, as well as you're getting Leica glass and all the updates that I talked about. It's only a $200 premium over the previous version, so I think that is still a great deal. So I'm going to take this nice machined, this is the thing I liked about the Leica. You notice it here? There you go. It's threaded where it stops exactly where it needs to stop, this lens hood. But let's just take this off here. When you take this off, now you have this thread here. So if you put this on here, there you go. Now you're covering that lens hood thread, but you still have the inner thread here, which is gonna be, I think it's 49 millimeters, so you could put regular 49 mil filters, but uh, some of the big things, the big difference is that new processor in here, the latest processor, as well as the sensor, which now goes up to 60 megapixels, and you can go to 36 as well as 18, and the DNG files maintain that 14 bit. So basically it does a, a mixture of pixel binning as well as in software, so that's great. If you don't want 60 megapixels, then don't shoot 60 shoot down at 36 or even 18. And a few other little things I noticed is that the electronic shutter on this is now only 1 16,000th of a second instead of one, I think 1 40,000th on the Q2. And I think that also comes down to the sensor. I think it reads slower because of that pixel binning and as well as 60 megapixels. So you probably just, by the time it gets to 1 40,000th of a second, you're probably getting too much rolling shutter. That's asking a lot of this processor as well as the sensor. And so 1 16,000th of a second is still pretty darn good for this camera. And this is leaf shutter, so the shutter is built into the lens here. So maximum shutter speed natively is only 1 2,000th of a second mechanical, but that also means that the flash sync is 1 2,000th of a second as well, which is great if you are a daylight flash shooter. And one of the things I've always liked about the Leica Q is this thumb rest, which is indented which is bad for third party accessory brands that want to give you a thumb rest because this is so nice, there's no point. But maybe you do want a hand grip. And so getting that hand grip that connects to this, which allows for wireless charging is great. And in here, it's a single card slot. It would have been really cool if it was a dual card slot. But with a camera like this, it's a point, I mean, it's a really nice point and shoot, but it's still a point and shoot. So having one single card slot is fine. And then in the end, like I said, it comes down to this lens here. I've always loved this camera because of this lens. I'm gonna show you in a second here how much I love the 28 millimeter focal length, all right? So let's start now. Here we go, Leica M10R with the Kex light meter, retro photo shutter release, camera, new camera film photo, Japanese silk straps. I'll leave links down below. And what do we have here? This is the 28 Sumeron. This is my brand new M4, which is not brand new. It came out in 1968, 1969. And here is my beloved 28 Summicron. And on here, another shutter release, another brand new pastel colorway, uh, Japanese silk strap from Camera Film Photo. And then I do have a 28 mil external viewfinder because this only goes to 35 mil frame lines. And here is a Headco external light meter because this camera doesn't have a light meter. Leica Minolta CLE with their 28 millimeter f2.8. This does have front lens haze, so I don't shoot with this very often, unless I'm shooting film and I want that hazy, weird, old school look, but still I have a 28 millimeter. My beloved Minolta XD with a 28 millimeter f2.5 MC mount, radioactive, so I'll keep this one away from my face. Minolta A-mount, which is now a Sony A-mount with a 28mm f2.8 autofocus. I gotta start moving stuff out of the way here. 
My original Ricoh GR1 film camera, 28mm f2.8. Then here is the Ricoh GRD4, 28mm equivalent lens. And here is the Ricoh GR limited edition, 28mm lens. Finally, the Fujifilm X70 with a 28mm. It's an 18 point something, what is it? 18.5mm f2.8. So it's a 28mm equivalent lens here on this little point and shoot articulating screen like this. And so pretty much you can do whatever you did with this. With, where's the Leica? With this camera here, obviously there's gonna be a size difference, but in spirit, these will shoot very similar. So I am super excited that this finally has an articulating screen. So as you can see, Take loves 28 millimeter. And so even without all the updates, I'm, I would still be happy with the original Q. The Q2 is awesome. The Q3 is just on a different level. Having 60 megapixels, but having the through resolution sensor, finally getting a phase and contrast detect autofocus, having the latest processor, having the more powerful battery, having an articulating screen, having wireless charging, having, I can't even mention this, but I think most Leica shooters won't care. This has 8K video, which is insane. And you can also record externally via HDMI. You can go H265, I think 420. I'll put down here like what the maximum resolution is, but I think it's kind of overkill for this. It would be nice if they can work this out, if Leica can actually have a microphone in using the USB-C, if that's even possible. I think that's the one thing with this. Uh, you could probably use this as a webcam as well as a B cam because of 8K. You could do a lot of punch in and even in stills mode, you can crop in, I think 35, so you got 28 natively, 35, 50, 75, and now 9 because you have 60 megapixels. You can use this as a B cam for video, but without proper audio, you can't use this as your main camera. It does have built-in microphones, you can see up top here, but that's not gonna be that great if it's windy unless you put those little miniature dead cats on top of here, but I'm gonna be testing that as well. All right, so now I think it's time to clear this desk up and maybe start playing around with putting different straps. So let's clean all this up right now now all right everything is clean now there's one accessory that i forgot to talk about is leica's leather strap they do give you let me just yeah it's real leather strap here and really nice it tapers right down and look how small that split ring is and it has that little subtle leica on there i'm glad that it's not a red dot it's just kind of embossed in here but as you guys know just like my watches i love third party straps and so right here i have a brand new Leica camera strap made by Coop. Now, I'll leave a link down below. I am a Coop ambassador. When I was in Austria, myself and Juan from Beers and Cameras got to visit them at their HQ. And so they sent me this strap here uh, for Leica. This is, the, if you go to Leica store, you'll see these official rope straps and they're made by Coop. And they also sort of sent me all their other colorways here. This is like a night navy and this is a beige. And this is one of my favorite series here. So I'm maybe gonna unbox this one as well. This is their, their orange collection. And so let's uh, take a look at these two. And we're gonna do an unboxing here. Here, let's just, I need my knife again. Let's just open this up and see what this camera looks like with an official Leica strap. Alrighty. Let's just open this up here. Ooh, look at that. And you do get a little, look at that. You actually get a Leica pouch. I did not know that. And so maybe that's why you pay a little bit more for this. And look at that. What do you guys think? That's pretty wild, that colorway. And so let's, uh, let's just pop it on right now. All right, so here we go. This is the official Leica coupe strap. You can see the Leica logo over here. They do give you these little leather kind of grommets or O-rings to protect, to keep the rings from actually scratching up the body. And you have that on both sides and it has the coupe logo on this side. This is nice leather over here. And then you have this nautical rope strap on the top. There's different colorways. I think this looks pretty nice and fresh for the summer here. But like I said, I like the orange collection that's in here. So let's uh, quickly put this strap on here right now. All right, so let's do it now. All right, so what do you think about this one? Orange collections, it's kind of a navy blue with orange. This does have the leather backing built into the strap itself. You don't need to have these rings separate. What do you think? I actually do like this colorway nicer. And as well, here's the green version with the orange stripes. So whichever one you think looks nicer, imagine there was like a, a, a safari or reporter edition of the Q3 and you had this green one. 
or this blue one. I think they both look great. This one is actually thicker and it feels a bit stronger than these ones. These are a little bit thinner. So maybe the orange collection might actually work better on the Q3 because it is lighter. You don't need to go as thick, but this is still a really nice quality. And so these are the straps, the coupe straps. All right guys, I actually just got back from going home for dinner. And what time is it now? 7.20. And I was just charging the battery. As I was mentioning before, as the battery gets to 80%, that light comes on, you know it's mostly charged. And then that green light is still flashing. So 80%, pretty darn good. Let's just pop it in to the Q3 here. And let's just turn this on, right? Let's check it out. Let's do it again, too much reflection. All right, here we go. Ready? Turn it on. And I love the opening screen. Look at that. Look how cool that is. All righty. There you go. Look how awesome that was. And then you just pick your language, English, and there you go. And then you set up through the Leica's Photos app. And so here you are. Q3, let's just uh, tidy this all up and uh, finish up the video now. Yeah, I decided to put the uh, coupe orange collection strap in the uh, blue colorway. I think this looks great. I talked about this, putting it kind of upside down this way. So when you're shooting, it kind of falls out naturally. But then when you're actually carrying it around your neck, it hangs properly like this. And so Q3, what are my first thoughts, my first impressions? Well, I've always liked it every Q. And as I mentioned, I love the 28 millimeter focal length. And so, you know, here again, M10R with the Kex light meter. And this is the 28 Sumeron. Here's my M4 with my 28 Sumicron. If you want to buy the Sumicron separate, it's $5,000. If you want to get the Suma Lux, it's $7,800. And so from a Leica perspective, getting a 28 millimeter Suma Lux with macro focusing abilities, and again, even without it being a macro, you are getting down to 0.3. And then macro mode, you're getting down to 0.17. Very close. So this is an all-purpose lens for someone who likes to shoot 28 millimeter, but because of that 60 megapixels, you have the option to crop in to 35, 50, 75, and 90. And so I don't see any minuses uh, using the Q3. The battery has more power, but of course, everything from the EVF to the LCD to the processor to the sensor uses more power. So it needed a higher capacity battery. And so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, lower uh, top electronic shutter speed, but again, I think it's that 60 megapixels. And so they're being more conservative with uh, how much electronic shutter you can get. Having the uh, soft shutter release is kind of a camera nerdy thing. I just love putting these shutter releases on here. They've kept everything important, everything that worked, except adding this articulating screen, which is the one thing that a lot of us wanted. And so we could probably imagine that the SL3 is also getting an articulating screen. And then also having the I.O. here, having a USB-C on the side. So before you couldn't do that. Now you can charge it in camera when you're traveling. You just got to bring a USB-C cable as well as HDMI out, which is something that not a lot of people are going to use. The one thing this probably needs is a external in. Maybe if that USB-C can be updated, that'd be great. And then having this connector here with the grip for wireless charging. So it's a win-win. Thank you so much Leica USA for sending this out to me to do an unboxing. I will be testing this and taking photos with this and getting back to you and let you know what I think about it. But I'm sure I'm gonna love this camera. And as well, 8K video, which is kind of a weird thing to have in a camera like this. But for using this as a B cam and being able to punch in 8K, just like being able to go 28, 35, 50, 75, 90, being able to shoot 8K and then punching in is going to allow you to get different focal lengths in video to change camera angles. I think that's a great option with this camera. So thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. I'll be, I'll be right back. All right. And happy shooting.